When considering revelational epistemology, it's important to emphasize the fact that man has taken their autonomous epistemology for granted. Because man is created with an inherent knowledge of his creator by virtue of being made in his image, and because he has been conditioned by the knowledge and interpretive principles of society, it's difficult for such persons to even begin to consider the necessity of revelational epistemology. Therefore, it is hoped that the following will serve as an illustration as to why revelational epistemology is not only sufficient, but absolutely necessary for having an assurance of knowledge. Now let's imagine a society that is solely oral in their communication and has absolutely no conception of written language or symbols. And let's say the intellectual elite of this society comes across a typewriter. Now you could imagine the sort of questions they'd be asking such as, what is it? What does it do? Is it alive or does it move? The ones determining what sort of object this is will put forth an interpretation in terms of their own personal experiences. But the problem is, as hard as they may try, their efforts will always be arbitrary, distorted, or maybe both. And if it turns out that they simply assert that this object has a useful purpose rather than having no purpose, how would they even begin testing their hypothesis? Well, by a great stretch of the imagination, they might eventually discover that by pressing the keys of the keyboard that maybe they could crack a strategically placed walnut. Now the possibilities are almost endless in terms of the possible functions of this object and all the options would be just as misguided and incorrect as any other. Now on the other hand, suppose these people were given the opportunity to see the strange object in operation through a video whereby the typewriter is being loaded with paper and a paragraph is being typed but the hands typing it are edited out of the video. Now, would they then have better success in figuring out the function? Well, as before, it would be left to arbitrary and distorted guesswork. And only if this oral society receives information from the person who designed and operates the typewriter will they ever begin to understand its function and purpose. So, the creator's relation to the subjects must become a factor in their interpretive schemes by explaining what written language is and how one uses it to communicate, followed by an explanation as to how to operate the typewriter. And outside of such an explanation from the typewriter's creator, these people could never have any assurance of knowledge with respect to this strange new object. But with revelation, this society could know for sure what the function of this object is in addition to a new means of communication. This illustration can be applied to all human interpretations of reality. And what the typewriter represents is the whole of reality and its function represents the history and future of reality and how it operates. And neither reality, history, or the future can be approached intellectually without revelation from the creator and controller of the universe whereby he provides foundational information as to the interpretive principles purposes, meanings, histories, and futures of it. And it wouldn't be necessary that exhaustive details are mentioned, but just the starting points are essential. And with such information, the human knower can then learn more and more about the world, the universe, and history. 
and in the process, they can be assured that their interpretation is founded upon the original and foundational interpretation from the mind of God. And if someone were to reject such revelation and attempt to gain knowledge on his own, all knowledge would be arbitrary and distorted. Therefore, autonomous knowledge is not knowledge at all. And as 1 Timothy 6.20 states, Avoid worldly and empty chatter and the opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge. And since God is the creator of all facts, and His comprehensive interpretations of reality precedes all states of affairs, the reference point of all knowledge must come from His revelation. Otherwise, we're left with an epistemology with no grounds of assurance. And if it turns out that a fact is what it is because God has made it so, it will never be given a truthful and certain interpretation unless it's understood in light of God's revelation. The alternative is to place authority into the hands of men to organize and assign meaning to objects, which will ultimately lead to skepticism where subjectivity and arbitrariness rules. So, there's only two options. One either begins his philosophy and reasoning with the God who comprehends and is in control of all things, or he begins with an incomprehensible reality where no truth can be known.